Is it all showing up? Is that showing up? Good. It's a Charlene. This is a, this is a, we all have different personalities. God created us. I'm kind of a zebra, apparently. It's good. I want to, I want to start this morning by praying. And so pray this with me. We're going to pray for ourselves. Put your hand on your heart. Say, Father God, open my eyes to see. Open my ears to hear. And I open my heart to receive and respond, which means to obey (laughs) what you're saying to us this morning. Amen. Amen. We come in and out and in and out, and church is awesome every week, but I actually felt like the Lord said, I want you to go back before you go forward. So if we have the picture... Because last week, Noel and Brant and I all spoke. And um, I talked about the baby sheep. I know. You should zoom in if you want. Go out to the point. And isn't that mother mother sheep royal? and She's awesome. But the whole point was we thought there weren't going to be any baby sheep and we'd given up on the dreams. So we talked about if you have dreams from God that you thought the season's over, it is physically too late there's no lamb coming and yet there was and the lord spoke to us through that that we need to take the dreams that we have walked away from thinking it's done and he is saying i want you to go back and pick up that dream there's a purpose for it i need you to dream that dream i need you to pray into it i need you to speak life into it again and i need you to ask is there anything in me to prepare is there anything in my surroundings to prepare because we're going to go for this dream And they're God dreams, because sometimes I have dreams that aren't God dreams, and they're okay, but God dreams are God dreams, and they have a purpose. So with that, I told you I would remember to bring back the picture, because I didn't get the picture last week, and she's so precious, and her name is Star. The point of that is that when I, I just because I put down baby sheep, lamb photo and a reminder if you weren't here and you didn't hear the message last week you need to go back and listen to it this is a prophetic word from god and sometimes we can have this oh i missed this sunday it's not a big deal but sometimes well let's just say it's time we shifted so then god said (coughs) i'm like what he goes i want you to talk about all of them i'm like okay so then because it's like well what did brent speak on Oh, uh, he said, I, I encourage you, if you have not yet, to go listen to the five sessions that I taught at the Bible school about deliverance. When Jesus said, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, that's our job. And if we don't know how to do it, or we think it's like Hollywood, whatever, and we get all because we're scared of it, that's the devil, th- we, or we're not equipped, it's, it's ridiculous. And so he's like, I need you to go do that. And he encouraged everybody, go do that. And the feedback we've had from some people is the first time I listened to it, I, I went, oh, and you're just listening to it, and it's a little overwhelming because it's new. And, and then there's like, oh, there's stuff. Oh, I got stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's the point. And then it's like, I'm going to go through it again. I'm going to deal with my stuff. Because the stuff is the devil holding us back or making our lives miserable in some area. Or stopping us from receiving things that God wants us to just live in normal awesomeness that we can't because we think or feel a certain way because of things we've gone through that has opened the door and demons have come in and attached themselves and they're influencing us and they're sucking the life out of you. And the joy. I particularly like joy. Hence the everybody, everybody, everybody praise. And I... You know, not the best dancer, but I love to dance. It's like I love joy. It's so much more fun than not. And so he said, you need to go do this. So if you went through the week, are you getting the mama anointing here? Did you make your bed? No, no. Uh, Two days. Did you make your bed? No. You need to make your bed. Is that a, a mom? Are you hearing the mom? Amen. And, and, and you might sit there and think, okay, making your bed's not all that important, or this isn't, but there are some things that are really important, and this is one of them. So I exhort you strongly, and we're going to keep asking, 
Have you listened to it yet? You're going to be so thrilled that you did. And if you don't have access to it, you just go on Wednesday group. What's it called? Wednesday prayer on Facebook, EFGF. And you say, can I be a member? Because it's a private group. And we'll say yes. And they're on there. There's five of them. So I'm like, okay. And then I'm going, oh, Lord, what did Noel talk about? Because I was still in bed by the time he's downloading this, although I was up before my alarm. But I'm like, and, and it was signs and wonders. I'm like, oh, good, that flows with what I'm talking about today. And, and he talked about it. And, and it, the thing is, it's beautiful right now because if you missed last week for whatever reason, we have the ability to go back and watch it because we're online. Are you tracking with me here because I'm going to go there? You get to right now go review it and I be Canadian you're even Canadian so this is Canadian content are you tracking with me now but at some point in time because it's not just Canadian content it's kingdom content the kingdom of light versus the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of darkness very very much wants to rule over Canada and we have a stake in the ground and we're holding it but some because our fight is not against flesh and blood so the demonic forces through people are going to go I don't like that that's not approved L-I-B-E-R-A-L content because if they said if we don't approve things it can't go on there and I guarantee you, for what we preach from this pulpit, they, our days may be numbered. Or God could miraculously f switch things. I don't know when the deliverance is coming, but it's coming. Because we're praying and because he said. But until it is, it isn't. So things may get a little bit more challenging. So while you can watch, I encourage you to. Because there may come a day where you've got to be in the building to get what God's saying. Like in the old days, show up. It's like, oh, I'll watch. I want to I wanna go th to the lake, and that's fine. It's holidays, you know, and I'll watch later, and that's good. We have a beautiful thing, but there's something about what goes on in the room that isn't the same as what's online. I even know that because we, we watched from Rome. We're going, good preaching. Way to go, Noel. But we weren't there for the praise and the breakthrough of the week of prayer and fasting. We weren't there for the worship. We weren't there for the people, the huggy time. One of the most important times. Yeah, God releases us to do that. Okay, so that sounds like it's a little bit, it's like, is she going to talk about mothers? <laughs> yeah, I'll get there. S but, but it was important, right? Remember to do this. Brush your teeth, listen to the word, go to church. Okay, so we had a great week. We had a great week. We had a great week. It was great. It was interesting, and it was exciting. On Wednesday, they were installing our patio doors. Been waiting 17 years. This has a spiritual implication. Hang with me. So we're. I was just excited, doing a little happy dances, and then our phones go. <coughs> it's like that weather warning. It's like thunderstorm warning. So I looked at. We looked at the. Pulled up the little map with the clouds that come and it says where it's going and right in the middle of this rain is this bright pink fluorescent fuchsia hail epicenter thing coming right over my house mama's going not my house so I looked at we're in the back because I flipped out the phone and I went oh and then I just from my spirit I just said you move five miles south here it's not hailing in my yard now, I didn't just carry on with my day because we have to look to see. So I looked five minutes later, and it had moved, but it wasn't far enough. So I spoke to it again. I released the weather angels. I said, take it five or ten if necessary. You know how far, and I command it to move. Now, if you could just look at the screen the way I was looking at the screen... The weather pattern was going this way over Esther Hazy, and that thing stopped and went that way. 
it, you, you would think in the natural that it would have gone this way and up because it was going that way. It's got to show off the pants. <laughs> but it didn't. It actually went the other direction. Amen. Now, I have prayed over things in the past, weather things, and things have shifted. And I have been praying. Um, and other times I'm just caught in the middle of it. And I'm like, oh, God, my garden's getting hail and I'm breaking. I'm just having a little mini meltdown because my things are breaking. And um, which was a soul issue I had to deal with. But other times the, the, I have heard the spirit of the Lord say, I'm not stopping that weather pattern. Now, I know that he doesn't know more than me. He knows everything. And I trust him. So I'm like, okay. So I don't keep praying. It was, I heard him. He said, no. Everybody say a little mental note to yourself. Sometimes God will say no to me because he loves me or someone else. And, so, and, and it's like, they, yes, the farmers need the rain. But some, in, in the back of my head, I heard this phrase. Now, God can talk to you, and it's important to talk and respond and have conversations. But the enemy can also talk to you. And he tried to put condemnation on me. And it's like, well, that hail hit Mooseman. That wasn't nice of you to move it. Did you see the pictures? All over the road. And I just went, I don't have authority over Mooseman. I don't know where the believers are in Mooseman, but they could have prayed for it to move, and we could have eventually had it go to the States. I don't know. But the point is, they could have also spoken to it and commanded it to just dissipate. Because Jesus said to the storm, storm be still, and it was. And we have, a, we have a testimony in a book of a woman who stood at the screen door in their farm and put her hands up on the sides of the door because the hail was coming through fi the fields. And she prayed in the name of Jesus over their land. It hailed up to their fence line, around the fence line, and over the back of their property so that the other farmers saw, like it, w like because it sits there for a while, and they're going to look at the, there's not there's no hail. It's like yes, I prayed. That's called a testimony. So she had authority over her field. So my house, my authority. Really, does this are we are we on Mother's Day yet? Well, Mama said, not my house. Okay, so while we're talking about clouds, this is, all, it is, it's all, this is Charlene. This is how her brain works. Welcome to my sermons. We're driving into Monday. We had, at Monday, we went into Regina. We had to go pick up some things. And as we're driving in, I look at the sky. I look at the clouds a lot. I like to paint. I didn't say I was good at painting. That's two different words. And sometimes I look at the clouds and I'm like, God, if I put those on paper, people would say those are fake. That is not what cloud looks like. When you actually start to focus on it, it's like, wow. And sunsets, he has never done the same sunset twice, ever. So I'm like, whoa, because I like fuchsia pink, and it's just all wonderful. But I looked uh, just out of the side, and I looked at the clouds, and my, and my eyes and my heart got drawn to it. And in th that instant, I kind of choked up. I f it was so beautiful. And I know better than to say, Brent, look at those clouds. Because I go, what? <laughs> you know, because God talks to us differently. And he doesn't. He, and he might have said, oh, those. But, and there was, I couldn't identify exactly what it was that was so beautiful. But I literally started to cry at the beauty that was in the clouds. I was like, wow. Is she going somewhere with this? Yes, as a matter of fact. So on the way home, we're coming home and we're heading into Whitewood and it's just, you know, when the, and, and it's just the clouds go, st and it's just this patch of bluey gray and nothing really distinct. And so I said, I said, Lord, those aren't, those aren't quite as pretty. And he said to me, they're working. See, that's how you know it's God because that is nothing I had to come up with. He said, they're working. And the rain was coming down. And then he said, they're both beautiful and functional. It was just this profound moment of how God thinks about things. And I was like, wow. 
just my little moment with Jesus, right? So then I get home and I'm thinking about that. I thought, God, that's such a cool thing. Because we, we need to have more conversations with God. And you would think, you know, well, that doesn't really matter for life. It's, it's a great thing. It's very obviously God, but does that have anything to do with life? And so, but as we hear him in things where there's no, <gasps> God, I need an answer, then we're a little bit more calm because we know what his voice is, number one. But number two, as I started to think about it, because I felt like he wanted me to share that, I'm going like, okay, where are you going with this, God? Because that's where it ended with me. And he said, well, you know, there's that scripture, and it's in Proverbs 25, 14. It says, like clouds and wind without rain is a man who boasts of a gift he does not give. And when the ground is dry and cracked and the crops are drying out or we planted grass and if you don't keep those suckers wet till they start coming out, your seed dies. And it's like rain is very important. So when you're looking and you're looking and you're waiting for the rain and then it moves in the wind or it goes and it does all this stuff, but nothing provides the relief of the rain and the refreshing and the, the life-giving rain. And I... I sensed very clearly that he's talking to us. In Jude 1, verse 12, it talks about clouds without water and trees without fruit. And on the surface, it all looks pretty. It has the appearance of being able to provide something. But it's disappointing. because nothing comes and so then there's frustration and hurt and things die it's like false advertising I'm like okay well they're going to love that <laughs> just to clarify what the Lord is saying in Philippians 2 verse 4 it says let each one look out not only for their own interests but also for the interests of others. And yes, it's the context of church and the body of Christ. And I, I'm not cherry-picking verses here, but the body of Christ, everybody say, that would be me, has a purpose. So if you didn't, when you gave your life to Christ, he'd just snap you up into heaven. So you didn't have to go through anything, didn't have to be here, didn't have to pray through stuff, didn't have to talk to anybody. But we have a purpose for still being here and we're to restore what God originally intended things to be. So he's not going to whisk Je us off into heaven to be with Jesus. He wants us to be Jesus because we're Jesus' body. Okay, right? And so we take Jesus into situations. Our Father who art in heaven, holy, holy, holy is your name. Your kingdom, your kingdom come on this earth with all these other kingdoms, and your will be done on earth. We speak it. We address things that are not lined up with God's will and shift things so that people have the opportunity to choose because God never over, overrides anybody's free will. But we create an environment as the body of Christ. We're supposed to be creating an environment that reflects the absolute best for people on the earth. And one of the things that God instituted and designed on the earth is family. <laughs> She's finally getting to Mother's Day. So this is the first thing because God said to me. And as I talk about this, I'm going to be poking things in the spirit realm, even if I'm not in the room. And, and But he said, people that struggle with these things, and we know the whole spectrum of all of this he said to me they're wounded no, they don't want to hear that they're wounded they think they're totally fine but they're wounded or they're hurt or they've been hurt by men or they've had a bad experience and so they have this whole emotional response that doesn't have anything to do with reality yeah that guy was not a good whatever but this is not all man and this is not how god designed it to function so you can stay in a you can go into a worse cycle a worse relational life experiencing circumstances on the earth or you can shift into what God designed things to be. So are you ready? Truth number one. I know it's Mother's Day. 
Mothers cannot be mothers without fathers. Thank you. Amen. Now I looked up the word father and, and, and I went to the verbs because we have this whole mess. The definition of a father is to make children. So if you can't physically provide something to make a child, you're not a father. You will never be a father. Mothers, every, so everyone has a father. You are only here because you have a father. Everyone also has a mother. The definition of a, a mother is to give birth to. Hence, <coughs> if you don't got the apparatus, you will never be a mother. Now, these things function in all three areas that God um, wove together within us. They function physically. And part of the problem that we have on the earth and in society today is we have fathers who have physically contributed and then, that, and then stopped. But with that physical contribution, there is also um, a soul contribution where mentally and emotionally and, and relationally and developmentally there are things that fathers provide. So we have a father who functions physically. They also can function and should function at layers naturally in the soul realm. And then we have spiritual, because we're spiritual beings, God designed this fathering spirit that, that fathers contribute spiritually to their children. And it's the same thing, all three layers, with the moms. And I had to laugh because Renata told me a story this week because one of the boys got a, a hockey stick or something, you know, poked in his eye. So the school called because your kid got hurt and we don't want, you know, whatever. And, and she said, I think they expected me to react like, and I'm thinking in my head like a mother. <laughs> and... Uh, and, but she got three boys, and God has anointed her to raise boys. Blows me away. And so the teacher is just like, hi, ha, ah, and this, ah. And she goes, did he need stitches? No. Is he bleeding? No. He's fine. <laughs> Does that not sound like a dad? A little bit. Just like, he's not bleeding. What's it after? And did it gush? I don't know. <laughs> if it hasn't still been gushing, it didn't easy. Yeah. So she just she just cool and calm. And that's a dad thing. You're fine. Get up. Is it broken? Yeah. You can limp. Yeah. Walk it off. Is that the, is that the, walk it off? <sighs> the design by God is for for fathers and mothers to to pour in from all three of those areas. That's that's the perfection of God's design. He has also provided redemption because we don't. We are human. <laughs> and we have a heavenly father because whether it's from just imperfection of being born in a sinful world and having had imperfect parents to total abandonment, God restores. It doesn't matter where in the spectrum is. God said, I am your father. And the heavenly father comes in and covers and protects and and he uh, he gives that sense of identity. I, I, I believe fathers give a male and female identity to their children. Comes from the dad. It's just my just that's just Charlene. There's no scripture for that, but I think there's something that that dads imp they it depart impart that the manliness to the man, and they impart your feminine, and I will cover you to the girls. And, and they can do that in a way that moms can't do the, you're suck it up, you're fine, even though she does that. Th that there's a, that thing that comes from the dad. So scripture describes God because he is our heavenly father. And then there's, there's a verse, verses that say, like a mother. 
because there's this whole thing of God, mother, father. Nowhere in the word. It says, like a mother. And I have watched these new young dads, and they're holding these babies. They're trying their best to do it like a mother. And it's t- and, but it's like, am I too strong? for? Th- and, and so there's this nurturing. And even when he would say, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I wish to gather you under my wings like a hand gathers his chicks. So God has this ability to function like a mother when we need him to. But he is not female. He is only described as being father. And we need to s- settle in with that because he's God and we're not. And we can't, he designed male and female from him, but he's a father who acts like a mother when we need it. So in the Psalm, David, there's two verses. It says, even though my father and my mother abandon me, the Lord will receive me. See, this is the God can restore things because he knows we're broken and a little hurt and we, we make mistakes deal with it and it says even though my father and mother abandoned me the lord will hold me close see he will receive me it's a, i give you a place that's a father thing i'll hold you close that's like a mother thing god does that and so within within life we need to have that spiritual aspect to everything that we do and um, because if you expect your parents to be perfect they will so disappoint you just letting you know. Do you know what I mean? When we have an expectation, it makes things harder sometimes when people are people. And that's okay. So, I know it's not Father's Day. It's Mother's Day. I didn't forget. You seem to be doing this Father and Mother's thing. Yes. Because the church has absorbed the culture of our society. And the culture is always less than God. It's less than his word. It's, it's, it's just less. So what exactly does the word say? Because it doesn't say take a Sunday a year, nowhere does it say that, and celebrate mothers. It says honor your father and mother and it will go well with you. It doesn't say obey. And parents, just just wait. Let me finish my thought. Okay? Uh-huh. She said, I didn't have to obey you. Let me qualify. Particularly when you're an adult. When someone is providing for you everything you need, they get a little bit more say than you. As our kids translated or transformed or whatever happens in teenage years, into older specimens of children. <laughs> you know, there was times when it's like what they wanted and what we wanted or thought was best was whatever. And so in that situation, sometimes there's a little bit of not seeing eye to eye. And so we, we processed with them. Eventually, we got better um, at if you disagree, you know, don't sneak around behind a rack. Come and have a conversation. Don't have an argument with me, but present your case. I may say yes. I may still stick with my no. <sighs> it's okay. And it shifted things. Because if you really want to go to that, you need to explain to me why. What are you going to get from that? And is it, or how are you going to handle yourself in that situation <laughs> so I'm not like stressed? Because we protect even after they leave home. Yeah. So you can obey. See, it doesn't say obey your parents. It does in Ephesians. But in that particular commandment, it says honor your father and mother. Okay. You can obey with an attitude of dishonor. Fine. I'm going to go make my bed, but I'm doing this. I'm obeying. But there's just reeking of dishonor. Not that you've ever done that. Okay. Okay. You can disobey with an attitude of honor. And unless your parents are asking you to do something that's contrary to scripture, it's just good to obey. It it has that concept of, because there are things where where it's like, no, I I know I I don't want to do that, but in the family it's okay or whatever. And and so as, as we live for the Lord, we live for the Lord. 
because sometimes youth are saved and their parents aren't. But so you can disobey with an attitude of dishonor, or you can obey with an attitude of honor. And and we have to understand those so that we understand honoring. Okay? And my point is that this is a 24-7, 365 days a year and a quarter commandment. It's not a, let's have a big hoopla one day a year and the rest of the time, mom. We celebrate moms. We celebrate on this day dads. But God said, I want you to live with this heart attitude. I want you to live with this heart attitude. That's God's design. That you actually, and then we start to, how can I honor you or can I do something? Because you look really tired today. It's not Mother's Day for another two weeks, but you're looking a little tired. Can I make supper? Oh. Right? right? It's, that, it's that interaction that honors. So it, it's not a bad thing celebrating Mother's Day. It's just less than. You see that? It's less than what God wants. And so as the church, we need to, we need to be s- celebrating and speaking to and, and taking God's design for family and for male and female and just putting them where they need to be, which is just politely out there. But we need to address it because otherwise we're clouds with no rain. Do you notice how I tied that all together all of a sudden? We have nothing to offer and the world is drying out and cracking up and things are dying. And, and so if the church has become institutionalized, like you can't tell the difference between what's going on at church and what's going on in the government... Because it was always really, really, really clear that we were to follow and do what God designed, not what the world says is right or wrong or good or bad or to be celebrated or not. So years ago, trying to figure out how many of you are old enough to remember this, there was a movie called Junior, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he had a baby. And it was hilarious because they gave him all of these lines and he did this whole, oh, my back, oh, you know, and I just feel like, and he was, it was hilarious, absolutely funny. While I, I know it's not funny anymore, is it? It's not funny. And, and I think we have learned as, as the body of Christ that th- this is part of the enemy's strategy. He will put something out there in media that at the time you're going, what a joke. This is humor because this is never going to happen. It's impossible. And we now live, okay, I'm scared to say, Brent turned 60 today, by the way, just throwing that out there. <laughs> okay, was it 30 years ago? How old is that movie? Like, however old it is, it seems like yesterday. Oh, is the memory going? Oh, I love you. (laughs) For however old that movie is, we're now at a place where there's people who just think this is going to happen. And and we just sat there with no voice. And the thing that hurts my heart is when there are people who don't know the Lord who are out there on the front lines going, taking the flack, because there's a spirit. What this is, I want you to understand this, is, is it, it was funny at the time, and we roll our eyes at it, but it w- it's part of the agenda of, of Satan to attempt, because he's not going to be successful, but he's attempting to desecrate God's design of family. That's what that is. It's, it's not about you and me or men and women. This is about Satan and God. And God said, I designed this to be absolutely beautiful and functional, and it will work without any medical. Oh, it's just, and I'm not, because we do. We have babies that we need medical help with, even to be born. We have C-sections. We have stuff. I don't mean that. I mean where we cut off and try to create body parts that aren't there. That is not God's design, ever. And Everything that, I I say this all the time, 
I hope you'll go, oh, yes, she says this all the time. Satan attempts to have a counterfeit for everything that God's designed. It costs more. It's always less than, and it destroys. His counterfeit for, for, for the Holy Spirit is, is being drunk with alcohol, which is really painful and costly and hurts our bodies and makes you do things you can't remember that were not good and it causes hurt in relationships and it, it's just overwhelmingly but when we are overwhelmed with the Holy Spirit it's um, <laughs> also very much fun and laughter and they said these guys are drunk so they had to have looked like drunk people look and Peter's going, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. This is the Holy Spirit. I think they were laughing un uncontrollably and having trouble walking. And I have been overcome with the Holy Spirit and experienced those things. It's like... <sighs> but it doesn't hurt. Nothing about it hurts. So the truth is... This is my really, this is my Mother's Day message. Is, is, if God wanted to say something to us today that didn't have anything to do with Mother's Day, but it was really important because he knows what's coming this week. But we weren't even, because it's like we have to do a Mother's Day service. And I love you all. I want to pray for you all. And just bless you all this morning. Because we can. But we have, we have so lined up things that, that we're having church dictated to by society instead of church dictating the life-giving message from God to society. And we need to address that. So, let's stand. Father, corporately, we repent. We don't want to be offensive. That's never the point. And you, we cannot always control how other people respond but the truth is, is that um, homes without fathers are, as said by fathers, particularly in the black community in the states, it's like our, our kids are a mess because the d there's no dads. And we have to fix that, and they're taking the ownership of that and speaking to their own. And, and so God, fathers matter. And... and and Father, as much as th there is this perversion and there's this twisting of you're not loving and you're not kind, God, we somehow have to be able to, with grace and authority and love, speak the message that um, sterilizing people is not kind. Damaging people who are struggling with their identity, and our identity comes from you, the devil's solution is always destruction. And so, Father, we repent for not being rain in society. And it feels, God, like we're, we're playing catch-up in some areas because we haven't been there with the grace of it through decades. And this has been 30, 40, in some cases 50 years in the making. And while we were enjoying your presence, the world was drying up and they needed the rain of your love and your truth. So, Father, we stand here this morning and we identify in the spirit realm as your body and we repent for not representing you on the earth. And, God, we're at this situation now where, where the children are at risk and we need mothers and we need fathers to stand up and say you cannot lie about this any longer. So Father, we just refuse to allow that spirit of fear to, to stop us from speaking truth to situations. And God, we want to honor what you honor. And so Father, I, I do that this morning. I honor fathers. And I honor mothers. 
I honor the roles that you described and intricately designed them to function in, not as equal, because they are not the same. So it is impossible. And we tear down the line, the lie that men and women are equal because we are not. It is impossible. We are two different things. Designed to be different. And we celebrate that. You're smart. You did a good job. You made us awesome. You made us wonderful. And you made us when we combine to be the most beautiful thing on the earth. That thing that creates new life. Whoa. And Father, the joy that comes from children, <laughs> we thank you for it. We thank you for it. So Father, as we walk through this year together as mothers and fathers, I pray for your wisdom. And God, we just decree and we declare that in our homes, men and women are honored and that they honor one another and they function in that decision-making thing till they come into unity as they pray together with you over the decisions that they need to make for their home and for their children. I impart the wisdom of God into every family in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I impart the joy of the Lord into these homes, every home. I thank you, God, <laughs> that we are uh, little happy spots in the community. And I thank you, God, and we decree that you're going to restore this. And so we ask that you speak to us as to what it is you would have us do. And God, although on occasion people read something online that shifts what they believe, we, we can't hear tone, we can't hear love, and, and we can't get through all the things that are blocking, Father, unless we're, we're having conversations. And so, Father, it, I, I pray that I, I just, I'm going to declare that a false battlefront. That's a false battle line. And, and what needs to happen is we need to have relational conversations with people one one on one one on one and that you would take us to where there is our questions uh, where there is confusion and that you would allow us to speak life into those situations so that one on one on one on one on one we would have a domino effect where the where the um, because that's how, how the enemy did it. And so, Father, we undo it. And we, we ask God for a, a supernatural help with this. God, that you would open the eyes. But, but you work on the earth through us. That's really clear from Scripture. God, sometimes we want you to do it because we don't want to do it. And kind of like the weather, you say no. So, Father, we repent for not being your voice. And we decree this morning that we will speak life to family, to your design. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.